Francis Ledwidge was born in this cottage uh, on the 19th of August 1887, the second youngest of nine children. And when he was just four years old, his father died suddenly. And this meant his mother had to go out and work in the fields and take in laundry and so on in the winter time and do anything she could to keep her family together. He left school early. He left school at uh, 14 because the, uh, his mother couldn't afford to keep him in school, although she wanted a, an education for all her children, but it wasn't possible. He worked with the local farmers. He was a strong lad, so he got plenty of work. And he worked in Slane Castle for a short time as a house guy, but he got into a bit of trouble there. He worked in then uh, in Ratfarnham. His mother got him a job in Ratfarnham. His older brother Michael had been serving his time there in a grocer's shop and she got him a job there. But he was very homesick for Slane and after about 10 days he got up and he walked the whole uh, 30 miles to Slane. And he wrote that first poem, uh, Behind the Closed Eye, when he was 15, uh, about his uh, time in Ratfarnham. I walk the old frequented ways that wind around the tangled braes. I live again the sunny days ere I the city knew. He was so homesick. He was a founder member of the Volunteers in Slane. He was a, a member of the Northern Board of Guardians and Rural District Council. He was a secretary of the Mead Labour Union for a year and he was very active in uh, activities in the village. He would have been in the drama group and they produced plays and he'd write some plays. He certainly always produced them and he was very athletic. He would uh, jump a wall or a gate rather than open it. Uh, in 1912, he, he sent a copy book of his poems to Lord Dunsany because he'd been writing poetry all along. And when Lord Unsaney saw the, the poems, he was astonished at the brilliance of the eye of this young man who could just see nature, things that we took for granted, didn't even notice how he could describe them. And he wrote back to him and he told him he was a true poet and he invited him to Dunsany Castle and gave him the full use of his library. Ellie Vaughan, whom he was madly in love with, lived in the Hill of Slane and he would go up to her on a Sunday and Ellie worked in the milliners in a shop street in Drogheda. Right. But in 1914, a war broke out in August 1914, World War One, and in October of that year, Francis enlisted in the Royal Enniskillian Fusiliers, which was a huge shock to everybody who knew him because he was a staunch nationalist. But Lord Dunsany had enlisted when the war broke out and everyone said, oh, Lord Dunsany is encouraging him, which wasn't true at all. Dunsany didn't want him to join. Dunsany knew what could happen and he'd actually given him an allowance to keep writing his poems so he wouldn't go to war. He served in several theatres of war. He was in Basingstoke for a while training. And while he was in Basingstoke, he got news that Ellie Vaughey had died. She had rejected him and she'd married another man. She went to live in Manchester and she died in childbirth. And he wrote uh, many poems to Ellie, over 30. And one of those was to one dead. And he wrote that in Basingstoke after he heard about her death. He was uh, in Gallipoli. He survived Gallipoli, the horrors of Gallipoli, July 1915, Serbia, um, France, and on the 31st of July 1917, at the first day of the Third Battle of Ypres, or the Battle of Passchendaele, it's probably better known, he was killed while making a road uh, with his comrades. He was killed by a German shell. <laughs>